Since our last NVIDIA GPU buyer's guide, they've added quite a few new additions to their range, including a whole new RTX 20 series with real-time ray tracing, and then some super versions of some of the cards too. And if it's left you scratching your head and you're baffled as to which to choose, then this guide should help you understand firstly where each card falls in the hierarchy and why you might select each. Though many modern processors are equipped with integrated graphics, they're usually only suitable for basic tasks such as web browsing and office applications. So for you gamers and video editors and those with a heavier graphical workload, you do need to make sure your graphics card is up to the job. The more powerful a GPU, the more cores and memory it'll have, enabling your PC to run games at higher quality settings at a smooth frame rate and allow you to take advantage of super sharp high resolution monitors, making everything look better. For ease, the latest series of NVIDIA GPUs are from the GeForce GTX 16 series and the GeForce RTX 20 series with prices ranging from as little as £65 right to over £2,000. There's an NVIDIA graphics card for everyone and to make your choice a little easier, we've split the cards into an easy to understand ultra high-end, high-end, mid-range and entry level. So let's start with the most powerful cards, which all start with RTX, meaning they're based on the Turing architecture, which supports real-time ray tracing to give you stunning graphics and adds in support for two new features, DLSS and AI-enhanced anti-aliasing effect that smooths out jagged lines and DXR, which enables gorgeous ray trace lighting effects in supported games. If it's important to you that you have the latest cutting edge features and the best possible gameplay experience, then the RTX lineup is where you need to start. On top of the normal CUDA cores, these cards also feature Tensor and RT cores, which allow hardware acceleration of things like the previously mentioned DLSS and DXR features. First up, the Titan RTX is a special edition card and what we term an ultra high-end graphics card. It's the fastest graphics card in the Nvidia lineup with the most cores and memory you can get. It has 4,608 CUDA cores, 576 Tensor cores, 72 RT cores and 24 gigabytes of memory. We don't recommend this one for you if you just want to play games though, as really it's meant for more professional use. So it costs significantly more than anything else but only minor gaming performance increases. Also sitting in the ultra high-end space is the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. This one is the top of the stack for consumers, costing significantly less than the Titan, but offering almost the same performance in gaming. It packs in 4,352 CUDA cores, 544 Tensor cores, 68 RT cores and 11 gigabytes of memory. And of course, supports real-time ray tracing that make games look truly stunning. Then onto the high-end graphics cards, the 2080 and the 2080 Super, which again are all based on the Turing architecture and support ray tracing. The RTX 2080 Super has the most CUDA cores of the two at 3072, plus 384 Tensor cores and 48 RT cores, making it a very powerful card and meaning you'll get more performance than the 2080 at a similar price. It's a great choice for gaming at 4K or UWHD, although you will need to consider dropping the resolution to 1440p in ray traced games. The RTX 2080 has slightly fewer CUDA cores at 2,944 and 8 GB of memory. It's a great choice for gaming at 4K or UWHD, although like the Super version, if you enable ray tracing, you'll need to drop the resolution to 1440p to get a smooth frame rate. Then we have the RTX 2070 range, which consists of the 2070 and the 2070 Super, the Super being the more powerful of the two. Both cards support all the latest Turing features and come with 8 gigabytes of memory, but the Super increases the core count from 2304 to 2560, plus 320 Tensor and 40 RT cores, giving a bit more performance at a similar price and making it a great choice for gaming at 1440p. Then is the RTX 2060 range, made up of the RTX 2060 Super and the RTX 2060, the most affordable 20 series GPU. 
The RTX 2060 Super is a new and improved version of the RTX 2060. It supports all the latest Turing features with 2,176 cores, 272 tensor cores, 34 RT cores and 8 gigabytes of memory, giving a bit more performance at a similar price and making it a great choice for gaming at 1440p. The 2060 is still a great choice for gaming at 1440p, packing in a respectable 1920 cores with 240 tensor and 30 RT cores plus 6GB of memory. Do note though that due to the huge complexity of ray tracing, it can only play enabled games smoothly at 1080p. And that's the end of the RTX lineup. If ray tracing is something that you need in your next graphics card, then only the previously mentioned cards are going to offer a great experience right now. If, however, ray tracing is not so important to you, then you can also look at the GTX lineup. These cards offer excellent performance in traditional game rendering, and they also tend to offer the best performance per pound, as they don't feature tensor or RT cores. Starting with the GeForce GTX 1660 range, of which the GTX 1660 Ti is the most powerful version. Although it has the same 6GB of memory as the original 1660, the GTX 1660 Ti has more cores, 1536 versus the 1408 of the 1660, giving you a higher frame rate in games at 1440p. The GTX 1660 Super sits between the Ti and the 1660 and it's a new improved version of the 1660, focused on delivering smooth frame rates at 1440p. It has the same GPU as the 1660 but the RAM has been upgraded from 8000 MHz GDDR5 to 14000 MHz GDDR6, helping it to achieve 9% better performance than the original 1660. The GTX 1660 is still a good buy and the most affordable graphics card for gaming on a high resolution 1440p monitor with 1408 cores and 6 gigabytes of memory. Next is the GeForce GTX 1060 which is available in both 3 gigabytes and 6 gigabytes. These are previous generation 10 series GPUs but they're still available at a knockdown price. Taking all that's good from the GeForce GTX 1060 3GB card, the 6GB variant does two things. It doubles the amount of memory, which is really useful in the latest games, and it also increases performance by upping the cores from 1152 to 1280. This gives the GTX 1060 6GB excellent performance in games at 1080p. The GeForce GTX 1650 Super is an improved version of the original GTX 1650. It's based on the same Turing architecture as the RTX 20 series cars, but it doesn't support real-time ray tracing or DLSS. However, as it's armed with 1,280 cores and 4 gigabytes of memory, you end up getting good 1080p performance at an affordable price. Then we have the GeForce GTX 1650, NVIDIA's most affordable gaming graphics card. It's based on the same Turing architecture as the RTX 20 series, but it doesn't support real-time ray tracing or DLSS. Armed with 896 cores and 4 gigabytes of memory, you'll get good 1080p performance at a really affordable price. And finally, NVIDIA's most affordable graphics card is the GT 1030. It is based on the older GeForce 10 series with 384 cores and 2 gigabytes of memory. And whilst it's not suited for playing demanding games, the GT 1030 is suitable for casual gaming on less graphically demanding games such as Minecraft and World of Warcraft at lower detail settings. So I hope this has been a helpful guide. You can shop the full range of NVIDIA graphics cards at scan.co.uk or of course check out our range of 3XS systems featuring NVIDIA GPUs or for more help making that important GPU decision, speak with one of our helpful advisors.